Ladies and gentlemen, Kay Kim here. Welcome to the daily update. I uh, hope you guys had a good day trading today. Uh, market is down slightly as you can see here, pretty much flat throughout, but we did see NASDAQ green today. But everything else, we're down slightly 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5% down across the board. I believe NASDAQ is up about 0.4%. It's pretty much a pause day today. Um, let's uh, let's try to uh, dissect this thing today. Trying to figure out what we can expect um, going into remainder of this month and possibly you know remainder of this year. Um, but um, just just to let you guys know uh, that this will be the last video for this week. There will be no video this weekend. Right, so I'll come after this video. I'll come back for you guys on Monday, which is the 30th of November, Monday night. So, again, there will be no video on Friday night. So, here, so let's look at the SP 500 here. Looks like, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, it looks like this is where it closed yesterday, right? So, we're hanging around here after a big ramp that we saw yesterday. And then pretty much moved sideways for about four hours yesterday's trading session. Today, it looks like we opened flat. And then right off the bat, we did see some weakness, right? And then it came back down to retest this pivot right here. It looks like that's a prior resistance level, right? And it was a pretty decent resistance just because we did see this thing hitting on that resistance a couple times and then kind of tanked, right? So... We kind of retested on the first hour, but bears were not able to bring in anything more than 361, 362. So that's a second hour stayed flat. Third hour pushed a little bit. Fourth hour sideways. Fifth hour, a little bit of doubt moved sideways type. But last hour, a little bit of push, but pretty much sideways entire day today. So, so looking at this price action, pretty much a pause day. It looks like we're just kind of consolidating here in the last couple of days after a big move that we saw yesterday after a big gap of, and the ramp and also you can see that my short-term moving average is still rising and price is staying above it so we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the micro term we're talking just last next last couple of days here let's zoom out a little bit maybe we get a little bit of better idea looking at things in the short term. So we've been tracking this rising pivot pretty much all throughout this month, uh, this month of November. And that's a strong pivot. Why? Because every time we hit that level, market seems to find buyers. And with that, price gets higher. So we saw that here again, here again, and then that's what made it cultivate higher high. So it's very, very important that if you wanna continue in that uptrend, this market continue to cultivate that higher lows and higher highs. So we have that. So we also wanna give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the short term. And you guys understand when I say benefit of the doubt to the buyers, right? I don't mean when I say benefit of the doubt to the buyer, that does not mean, okay, market is ready to thrive and go to 400 without a pullback. When I say benefit of the doubt, go to the buyers here. I said benefit of the doubt, go to the buyers here in the short term, right? What that meant was when we do see a pullback like this, it has higher probability cultivating that higher low and market bouncing back up to create that higher high. So what, when I say benefit of the goals to the buyers here in this vicinity, I don't mean it certainly could. It certainly could make a move to the upside because we're still in an uptrend. But if or when price do see a pullback, it has higher probability of cultivating that higher low before this thing make back, makes its move back up to create that higher high yet again. That's what we mean. Because in the short term of sense, nobody can really tell, are we going to see a, you know, move to the upside or are we going to see a pullback? It's extremely difficult to figure that out. But if you can understand, okay, are we at the level where this market starts to see a decline and that thing's going to start tanking when we're going to get in a bear market? Or do we have a higher probability of making a down move 
but then there's a good chance you're gonna make that higher low and before market pushing that price higher. If you can understand that, you understand how to right adjust your portfolio accordingly, right? So you can see right here, like in this right here, when the market, because we saw a pretty decent move here. This was that I think I believe that was election week. When we saw that big move to the upside, and this was a Friday, when this thing was moving sideways like this, how can anyone tell you that this thing is gonna come down, go higher, right? Because if you look at this as, okay, well, okay, that's a bull flagging pattern right there. Yeah, I read it somewhere in a textbook, technical analysis textbook, man, or some dude was tweeting out these flagging patterns. Okay, let's apply the same flagging pattern here. Huh, interesting. How come is how come this time we saw that flag breaking out to the upside, but this time the flag broke out to the downside? So that means it does nobody truly know in the short term. So those flags are not guaranteed thing. Well, obviously nothing is guaranteed in life, similar in the market. So that's why I don't go by these. I don't go by these short-term patterns because you can see how this time it looked like did play out to the upside, but it looks like here it didn't play out. So if you're actually expecting this time to make a big move like it did here, well, you're pretty disappointed because your flagging pattern did not pan out. So that's why I don't completely rely on it. What I do rely on, because if you've been watching my videos throughout last, you know, since the March lows, I rely on mostly on the current market trend and the sentiment. Something that I've been analyzing this market with you every single day. That's why I look at micro term, I look at short term, I look at mid term, and I look at long term, right? That's what's important to me because in the short term fluctuations, when we see this short term consolidation, it's extremely difficult for me to say, okay, yeah, that's a bull flag, yeah, that's going higher. It, it's hard to say that because again, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of 50-50, right? And we have a similar situation right now. We got that move, we're looking at bull flagging here. Which way, right? I mean, just looking at last month or so, this time this flag did play out to the upside, this flag played out to the downside. So what is what about this third one? Is it upside or downside? See, I think a lot of people trying to figure that out. I think what gives me a lot of edge in the market is I really don't care which way the market moves. You see what I'm saying? Like if the market actually do make a move to the upside, that's great. I'll just continue to hold what I'm currently holding. So I'm totally cool with that. But what if market do see a pullback to the downside? Well, then what I'm going to do is because I am overall bullish in the market in the mid to long term, I'm going to look for some stocks that I can probably accumulate. You see what I mean? So I don't have to figure out in the short to micro term what are these patterns mean. And I think a lot of traders kind of get caught up in that, trying to figure it out, trying to forecast, trying to predict that short term movement. And it's, it's it, as you can see here again, it's not easy because sometimes it plays out, sometimes it doesn't, right? So in the short term, I want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. We're holding well above this rising pivot, right? And it's been acting as support. How many times? One, two, three, four, five, right? And my midterm moving average is really, really thriving to the upside now. It's really, really getting up there. And when you see my midterm moving average looking like that, you definitely want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the midterm. All right, let's look at the midterm here. So looking at the midterm, we're talking last couple of months price action here, right? So that's a good consolidation, right? Looking at maybe, you know, looking into more of a big picture. We had a big move here and then two months since September, October, November, two, three months, we kind of like consolidated, right? And that's how the market likes to move anyway. You see a big run and it likes to kind of digest its gains, kind of wait, rest, uh, you know, consolidate before making a move. Another thing is important, the midterm is this is important pivot. We talked about this before. This is important pivot that buyers want to hold because that was a neckline. We held that level right there, which is also coinciding with the rising pivot. That was a little double bottom there. Came back to retest. Again, my midterm moving as rising. So as of today, we want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers, micro term, short term, mid term, right? Does that mean the market is ready to go shoot up 370 
certainly possible because we're on an uptrend. It means even if we see a pullback, and if you want to look at things maybe more short term, as long as we stay above my rising pivot and my midterm moving average, also coinciding with this gap area at 355, as long as we stay in generally in this area here, 350 area we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers and any kind of pullback you kind of want to expect to buyers to show up and buy those dips right so at this point you know what bulls want to do is maybe continue in that you know a momentum to the upside even if we pull back slightly maybe come down to retest 360 right maybe even filling this gap is not a huge deal right and i think what i see a lot of times is a lot of a lot of a lot of new traders that comes to market market started coming back down to fill these gaps start seeing a little bit of choppiness all of a sudden they go back to that crash scenario they get overly dramatic almost overly emotional overly bearish and then by the time market gets back up they get scared they forgot to buy those dips and the market goes without them and then once the market makes a move to the upside start going to 360 370 they're like oh my god i missed my chance and then they start following at the top and the market start to pull back they exit you know you know because they're they 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 chased it in 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 you know with the uh, emotionally they chased it up because they missed out the dip and then when it pulls back they emotionally in panic they you know get out and you know you guys all been there I've been there right you guys all been there trading that way that's why you want to strategize right you want to strategize when things gets if you want to buy you want to strategize it when the market is actually starting to see some weakness, right? When there's fear, you want to be greedy. When there's greed, you want to be fearful. And then when the market starts to make a move, people are greedy, you start want to be kind of be fearful. Okay, well, now there's a lot of greed in the market. I want to be start being fearful and see if there are any kind of positions. Maybe I can adjust a little bit, close out of one third or something like that, right? Let's check out that oscillator real quick here. So, Looking at this oscillator here, Lester is pull back, cross down. We saw something similar here. We saw something similar here, and we saw something similar here. So I tweeted out earlier today that how can we interpret this? And I had a lot of uh, you know people replying to that um, to that question, and there's some good answers. And you know what I mean. So I think a lot of good answers were there. I think the best answer, if you answer in a certain in in this kind of fashion, well, first of all. Obviously, price action is always a king, and the indicators are subordinate to the price action. So we still want, despite the fact that we have the cross, we still want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. So if you think about it here, right? When you saw that cross, you know, you missed out another, what, another like 6% move to the upside, right? You missed about 6% move that happened in just two days. And that's a big move for S&P 500 to move 6% in two days. Because when the oscillator started moving sideways, you see, that's when we saw a big gap up and another gap up here. And despite the fact that we did see a gap up and oscillator pulling back like this, you know, the price relatively stayed up, right? And that's what we saw these bullish divergence characteristics, which we've been covering on my videos every single day. Right, so here, so when you see my oscillator pulling back in an elevated state on the price action, cultivating higher lows and higher highs, you still want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers, not get into a, a emotional conclusion, right? So here, what we can say is, okay, because there's a chance where oscillator could move sideways here like this, and the price can make a move while the oscillator just moved. We've seen that happening. If you remember, I don't know if it was May or June, we saw my oscillator just staying sideways for weeks, maybe a whole entire month while the market kept moving higher to the upside. Was it October, September? You guys remember this? So that's a possibility. Another possibility is where market can correct through time, not through price. So where market can make a move. So I even come down to 360 or something like that, move like this. And then in that process, you see my oscillator kind of calling back down and reset before making a move again. That's another possibility, right? Or we could see something like this where we, did see, we do see initial pullback, but sideways 
and then bullish divergence and then bring it right back up. So there's a whole lot of things can happen. So when you do see a cross, first of all, we can see that, okay, buyers are tired. That's the reason why after we, with this move, we're not seeing continuation to the upside, we're seeing sideways. But keep in mind, even though buyers are tired, they can actually gap it up because that's what happened here. Bear buyers are actually already tired here, right, at this level. And then they gapped it on next next day, and then they gapped up crazy, like 3.5% second day. While after the oscillator got into that overbought, overbought zone. And that kind of stuff can happen when you're in a primary, when you're in a, you know, not primary because we're actually analyzing short term 65 minutes, but when you're in an overall uptrend. So all this is saying is right now conventionally, Bears are, uh, bulls are tired. Can bears take advantage of this and bring it down? Yes. And maybe fill this gap. I think that's the best they can do in a conventional means, right? If the market moves kind of a ordinary conventional way, the best bears can do is come and fill this gap and then that level act as support. In the process, this thing comes back down and then before going right back up. So there's a whole lot of things bulls can do. So what I will look at this is, okay, right now there isn't a whole lot we can say about that oscillator. We just know that bulls are tired, but if they really want to, they can bring it right up, right back up. Sometimes it creates just a little bit of space, bring it right back up. So we can't say, we don't, it, the market, I mean, the oscillator is not telling us a whole lot, except the fact that we're kind of getting tired. But we're on, a, we're on a uptrend sentiment right now. There's a lot of bullish sentiment in the market. So you'd be surprised what bulls can do despite the fact that we're in a overbought zone. And that's how I would interpret it, right? Obviously, man, we will have a little bit more uh, data going forward. It's, it's gonna be half day on Friday. Again, I won't be here on Friday to analyze, but I'll come back on Monday. And we'll just get a little bit better up, you know, better idea where the market is, where that oscillator is, stuff like that. If I have a chance, if I have a time, I'll tweet things out on Friday. But I'll come back on Monday. You guys have a great Thanksgiving with your family and friends. Uh, thank you for your viewership. Thank you for your, um, you know, comments and replies and things like that and follow me over the years. I am thankful that uh, you know I uh, was able to bring these uh, information to you guys, and you know maybe can help you in your own analysis as you navigate this market. Well, enjoy your uh, Thanksgiving holiday and holiday weekend, and good luck trading Friday next week.